Savage, a Savage Approach Personal Finance. This is George Grumbacher, and the time is right. Welcome today's guest, a strong and powerful Barry Spencer. Barry, are you ready to do this? I'm ready. Excellent. Let's do this. Barry is an author. He is a financial educator, a tax and retirement specialist. He's the co-creator of Wealth with No Regrets. I'm excited to have you on. Barry, tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Oh, that's great, George, and great to be on with you for sure. I am a proud husband to Lori of uh, 20 years coming up here in September, two kids. I have a son, uh, 13 and daughter, 10, just awesome, awesome kids. And uh, I am a a four time, my claim to fame anyway, is my, I'm a four time Ironman and elite triathlete. Nice. So that is a really uh, fun uh, and challenging uh, piece that I did in my thirties that I'm really proud of. Um, and so that's really exciting. Um, but for me, I go back, uh, yes, what, what I do and why I do it. That's a really important question. I love that you asked that George, cause that is the foundation for anything that we do. And we want to give our life to is there's gotta be a reason why. So, uh, growing up, my parents, uh, switched schools at the start of sixth grade, kind of like one of the worst times to put a kid in a new school. Right. Um, and I was a smaller kid back then and it could be termed a late bloomer even. <laughs> <laughs> so I got picked on, needless to say, at school, I got picked on a bunch and it, middle school was very difficult for me. And so the seed was planted in those times uh, early in my life for, uh, and two things happened as uh, I started to overcome, I learned to overcome challenges and I started to look out for people uh, that were getting picked on because that was my personal experience early in life. So fast forward into my adult life. And my dad started losing his battle with cancer early in life. And after he lost that battle with cancer way too at a young age, I remember him as I laid on his bed with him and he said, uh, uh, Barry, take care of mom. Well, after he lost his battle with cancer, I was thrust into the role of co-executor and co-trustee of my dad's estate. And I quickly started to realize that my dad had been and was in the process of getting picked on by the financial industry and the tax man. Hmm. So in the uh, respect of my father and taking care of mom, I quickly uh, discovered I needed to kind of really run in and figure this thing out pretty quick and kind of sort back from fiction in the industry. And as I started to do that, I had people asking for help. And that's when my friend, now business partner, uh, Scott Noble and I, Uh, launched the business and started to uh, be industry transformers and help successful business owners, executives, uh, professionals, and independent women uh, do better than they ever thought was possible with their money and their life as a result. Nice. Well, I certainly appreciate that. How how old were you when, when, when you got thrust into this responsibility? So my dad uh, started uh, getting sick, gosh, you know, 20 years ago. And so we started to dive into things uh, together and I started to understand a little bit more. Uh, In 2007, my dad lost his battle with cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, coming out of that is is when I got on the fast track and in-depth real world course of figuring this stuff out. Yeah, I appreciate that. So when you say your dad had been picked on, what 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 does that mean? Yeah, I think that uh, the financial industry uh, likes to become smarter than their clients <laughs> and then for leave them in the dust and confusion, and which is really hard to do for someone as smart and savvy of a business owner of my, like my dad. He was very successful in what he did. And to um, I always say they, they're really good at doing two things, um, speaking a foreign language and never understanding, number two, what clients really want beyond the money. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm often, it's, it, it's never ceases to amaze me how it seems like it seems like the industry is so unnecessarily complex, but it could be that they're not necessarily interested in letting it, letting clients in on the secret sometimes. So, Oh, certainly not. They, you know, they would rather control the purse strings and, and, and what that really uh, looks like. And I find as a result, you know, I think people make 
three mistakes. If I, if you don't mind me sharing no, those, please. Um, and number one is really not having a well constructed wealth engine. And it's really not people's fault, the client's fault that they don't. It really is that industry that has a you kind of a, a foreign language talk and kind of talking over people and stuff. But number one mistake is people don't have a really well constructed wealth engine that really in great times prepares them for exactly the worst of times and in the worst of times prepares them for the best of times that are year that are still to come. So that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, thinking of a portfolio as a plan. And the brokerage houses, the big banks, and all of that love to uh, kind of dupe people, if you will, unnecessarily into thinking that just because they have a portfolio and a certain amount of money and a certain return or a withdrawal percentage, they all of a sudden have a plan. Well, a portfolio is not a plan. So that's the number two mistake. And the third mistake is uh, really banking on a short life and really everything is just going to be okay and work kind of. Uh, on a straight line up and to the right as some people think and that is not at all how life in all practical worlds really happens no there are very few things that go <laughs> that start on the left side and go straight up to the right <laughs> very few things very, right? few. very few things at all yep i think i think that those are i think that those are important um when you say wealth engine tell me more about that yeah, I think, you know, inside of uh, inside of a well-constructed area, some people need to have an engine. I think what people have been told by the financial industry is to have uh, an IRA, to have a 401k, to have an investment, uh, you know, a, a, a trading, uh, you know, stock portfolio or bonds or something like this. And they're told to use these different tools and vehicles. And so they're all kind of cobbled together. And people say, well, I have that 401k or IRA. Yeah, I've been funding it like I've been told. And, oh, I have investments and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but at some point, at some point, all of those tools and all of those vehicles need to be converted into an engine, not just assets on a balance sheet, not just uh, uh, dollars that are comprised into a portfolio, but a real engine because the engine does something and that critical nature that it does is to actually provide an income stream to people in retirement. It, what it does is actually provide a sense of safety, security, predictability for a lifestyle that they always dreamed that they would be able to have once they kind of reach that point in life. And so an engine, it actually does something. And what people need to realize is what do I want that engine to do? And then is it built in such a way that it will actually do the thing I want it to do? And when it's doing the thing I want it to do, will it help me feel the way I want to feel when I'm doing it? Got it. So that is certainly a valuable thing. This is the thing that I – is is what I'm doing going to get me to where I want to go? Is it going to give me the, the peace of mind that I'm looking for? That, 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 I think that sort of goes hand in hand with just the idea of here I have a portfolio for you and this is your plan – where, when in fact you might have the thing, but it's not necessarily the plan. You really haven't done real planning. That's exactly right. Just because you have money, just because you have savings, just you have a portfolio, just because you have an advisor, just because you've worked with a big bank uh, for a long time, just because you've had an advisor for 20 years that you started when you were 30 or 40, just because you funded your 401k plan during the course of your your, your working years does not mean you're set up for success in retirement. It does not mean you'll experience what I call a real world return. Um, and that is what really makes the difference between, you know, having a retirement or being in retirement and retiring abundantly. Oh, got it. So, and I think that's a great term right there. So when you say retiring abundantly, what, what do you mean by that? Well, I think, uh, and this is what we put into our book, Retire Abundantly, and, and we said that there's really four pillars um, to uh, an abundant retirement. And number one is becoming the person you want to be. Uh, number two is doing the things that you want to do. Number three is um, being with the people that you want to be with. And number four is making a difference where you want to make that difference. And what's interesting about those four pillars of abundant retirement is it has nothing to do with the amount of money you have. 
It doesn't have to do anything to do with the return that you are getting from the stock market or bonds or anything like this. It has nothing to do uh, uh, with the the financial products and instruments that the uh, financial industry likes to tout and talk about. These are all things that you can control the retiree, the soon-to-be retiree, the business owner, executive, the professional, the, the independent woman who has money and resources. See, these are all things they can control. And, and when you can control those things, you can measure everything else in the financial and legal industry against those things and take control of your future versus being controlled by someone else's design. Got it. All right. And those are powerful questions right there. It's and I I I, I, I want to dig into them. Um, but first, it's it's always been interesting to me why there are so many folks who are working in finance who don't who either they just don't care or they choose not to ask those questions. Do you have a sense of why that is? Well, I think that the majority of those in the financial industry are well intentioned and well meaning. I think that people who hire an advisor in the industry do so with good intention and good motives. And I think most of the people, there's some bad in any industry and some uh, people that lack integrity in any industry. But for the most part, I think they're well-intentioned and well-meaning. I think the training they receive and the umbrella um, under which they operate dictates what they can and cannot do. And I think that's what brings about a mismatch between what the client wants to achieve based on what they have and what the advisor really can provide to them, there's a mismatch and there's a hindrance there that I don't think anyone really intends and no one's really intentionally trying to um, uh, uh, you know, thwart in the midst of that. Got it. So I, I think that these are like every great question you need, you you need to actually ask yourself the question and then take the time to think about and probably put pen to paper to to write down the answer to these questions. And these are big questions. Become the person you want to be, do the things that you want, do it with the people that you want to, and then have the kind of impact you're interested in having. Is this, for lack of a better term, homework that, that you give people? Is this something you work through together? So, I mean, these are things that anyone can do on their own and certainly right now more than any other time to think about their wealth and their future within these kind of con- constructs are certainly helpful and can bring calm. Um, you know, Aristotle said, if you want to know what it's like to be in water, don't ask a fish. <laughs> right. And the reason why is it's hard to get clear about yourself by, by yourself. So if you want to supercharge the answers to these questions, then you get with an advisor who will talk with you like a human about these questions and really dive into what it is that you want in these four ill uh, pillars of, of abundance. And when you do, I think there's things that, well, we've seen with our clients and what we've done with people, we've seen light bulbs go on and we've seen revelations occur and we've seen uh, release happen and and all of a sudden a smile occur that says i had no idea that i wanted this and i had no idea i could do this i had no idea this was possible and uh wow if we could do this this would be amazing um so i think when you engage with someone who's really good at asking questions like you're good at asking questions george and you're able to connect with someone in this way who will ask these good questions and interact with you I think the result is much greater than if you just try and do it yourself. But certainly, if you just ask these questions of yourself, jot, take out a notebook and write down answers or grab a spouse and talk with a spouse about it, you will be far better off and miles ahead of everyone else who doesn't. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's 100% correct. And this, this just the last couple of minutes gives direct evidence of why it's so flawed to think of a portfolio as a plan because this has nothing to do with portfolio or any accounts or anything like that. But these are probably the most important questions you need to be really asking if you are in fact going to have the kind of retirement that you want to have. Absolutely. And I, and I think advisors are trained and told, hey, you've got to talk to clients about the economy, about the markets and about investment returns. Well, there's three things advisors cannot make advice about in any skilled or certain way. Number one is predicting the markets. 
<laughs> number two is fortune telling the economy, and number three is promising returns. Right. They're told to do these things, but they really can't do it well, successfully, or with any amount of precision. But certainly, doing these things, they can do with much precision with a client if the client will be open enough to it. Yeah, I think that that's never thought of it that way. It's actually when when you think about it, it's sort of a silly thing. But anyway, I think that that's great. So that is a powerful thing right there, and to be able to to walk people through that process and really get clarity on it, I think that's that's immensely valuable. I like it. Well, yeah, Barry, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Savage Nation is ready for your difference making tip. What do you have? For I them? love it, and I love that you do this, George. I think it's really powerful. So. Um, clarity, not financial products, brings confidence. Like that is great stuff. That definitely gets. Come on, come on. And that 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 is the truth. You know, searching for clarity and being being able to help people to get there and have that peace of mind is a very valuable thing. So, Barry, thank you so much for coming on. Where can Savage Nation learn more about you? Well, first of all, they can go to our website, Wealth with no regrets.com they can check out a whole bunch of uh, free resources there including a uh, scorecard you can download for free and take that uh, scorecard and find out kind of where you're at right now today so that's one uh, resource and i was thinking about this for your audience george and if they will uh, anyone in your audience over the next 30 days if they will email me barry at wealth with no regrets.com we'll put together a special retire abundantly package for your audience, and they mention uh, uh, Savage in the uh, subject line or body of that email, we'll put a special package together for those folks. And anyone in Georgia who's a Georgia resident will send a free signed copy of our book, Retire Abundantly, and a free signed copy will go out to any one of your listeners in Georgia, and uh, we'll be glad to do it for your folks here uh, jumping on and being a part of your audience. I love it. Well, Savage Nation, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, show Barry your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Go to wealthwithnoregrets.com and download the Retire Abundantly Scorecard. I think that'll be a very valuable thing. And shoot him an email. And the email is what again, Barry? Barry, B-A-R-R-Y at wealthwithnoregrets.com. Perfect. To mention the show and get a copy of the book and also the special package that they'll be putting together. Thank you again, Barry. Thanks, George. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight because we are all in this together. <laughs>